Bingo. Okay, so I know last time I talked about poisoning, and my reason today to talk about it, I'm talking about clonazepam, by the way. Um, so last time I talked about poisoning, so the reason is this is Faith. She was my boyfriend's dog, and they moved houses two summers ago. And um, the people before them had dogs, so they didn't think anything about like having a poisonous plant in their backyard. They actually had clematis in their backyard. Faith ate it twice, and she ended up having to get put down because all of her internal organs failed. Oh my gosh! So that's why and we couldn't even have coordinated this any yeah. better. We go from <laughs> kind of general poisons to this. Um, so that's why I've kind of gotten interested in it, and I've talked about it in every single one of his classes. Yeah. So if you've ever had a, another class with me and him, that's mm -hmm. why I talk about it. Um, so this is what it looks like. Wow. It's always on those like archways, and they actually had one of those in their backyard. That's what it's on. But obviously, after they found out what it was, they destroyed it right away. Um, but it's part of the buttercup family. It's found in temper, temperate, temp, yeah, temperate, temperate regions in the northern hemisphere. Um, it's among one of the most popular garden plants because it's very adaptable, and it obviously has like this huge mass of flowers that are really pretty. Um, and it can also be used like in other parts of the world is used as like a remedy to like treat headaches and migraines and stuff. Um, so this plant contains anemone uh, along with cardiac glycosides. <coughs> yeah, those ones listed. Um, it produces and releases that. Um, <laughs> Point to it at least. It yeah. releases. It releases <laughs> this. this. Um, and it's kind of like a self-defense mechanism mechanism because it doesn't want to be eaten. <coughs> and so when the animal eats it, it releases that and it causes, it's supposed to cause like sores in your mouth. So like we think that Faith, obviously she was 12, so we think she didn't have any taste buds. Mm -hmm. That's why she kept eating it. So like as soon as you eat it, it's supposed to like. So like, her, really sensory, eat, you know? her sensory system yeah. was uh, subpar. So yeah. she's not, yeah. So um, usually many pets do not even go near it because of that. Mm -hmm. um, so if your dog somehow does end up eating it, um, it can cause vomiting, diarrhea, hypersalivation, mouth and throat tingling, abdominal pain, and lethargy. It can also cause bradycardia and ventral fibrillation. Um, it causes the kidney dysfunction from the release of that. Um, and it can also cause central stimulation and paralysis. Um, and since, like I said, not a lot of dogs actually end up getting poisoned by it, the treatment is um, basically just uh, symptomatic and supportive because a uh, specific treatment reg regime hasn't been like um, made up because it's so rare. So if your dog ingests a small amount, you can use activated charcoal to induce vomiting. You can also use like honey milk or syrup to like, so your dog can just lick it up and their mouth can get soothed. Um, if they ingest a large amount, um, you can administer atropine to stabilize the heart rate and you monitor kidney function and heart rate. And that's basically all you can do because, like I said, they don't really know how to treat it because it's and, so rare. And then look how difficult it would be to determine how much a dog ate yeah. unless you're sitting there. And if you're sitting there watching, you wouldn't let them eat it anyway, you know. So yeah. you come upon it. Did they get a little or a lot? Yeah, because like Faith actually ended up eating it twice. The first time she just had hypersalivation and like you could tell she was really lethargic. She was just laying in her bed. And they actually called the vet and the vet like just said, oh, just give her milk because it'll soothe her mouth. Um, so that's what they did the first time, and then she was fine the next day. And then literally like two days later, she ended up eating it again, but they didn't know what it was, so they couldn't really do anything. So the first time they didn't know what was causing this. Yeah, they still didn't know until yeah. after. Yeah, yeah. And then we're like, okay, well, she must be in a poisonous plant. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the second time, she kind of did the same thing. They gave her milk again. She was acting fine. And then in the morning, they like had to take her to the ER because she was like basically, they could tell she was going to die, so yeah. that's what happened. So, and I also could not find like how much your dog has to eat to be a large or a small meal because it's so rare. Mm -hmm. um, so basically the moral of my story is you need to watch out for like what plants you have in your yard and if you move houses, like always be cautious of like what the previous owners had and just like make sure that you know what you're planting as well because there are like thousands of lists, like thousands of plants on the list of poisons, so yeah. You're ready for questions? Yeah. Questions, comments? Yeah. Um, is there any like toxicology tests that they can see if the dog, like if it's in the dog's system yeah, or no? I have, is it, like, I have no idea. You don't know? Okay. I mean, it's possible, yeah. I think it's probably pretty rare, so I mean... That's I why I didn't know if they even know right. like the genetic makeup right. like of it to see on a test if right. the dog has ingested it or not. Yeah. 
I think it happens rare enough that you'd have to have a very specialized chem lab to, you know, to detect it probably in the blood. But it makes a good point. You know, like, see, the other owners could have had a dog in the dog. Yeah, they, yeah, okay, that so was another they point. They had two dogs, so yeah. that's why they didn't think anything of, like, right. oh, they had toxic plants. But, like, mm -hmm. they were all into gardening, so that's why they had that plant. Yeah. But you can see, I mean, you can't, just because two dogs never eat, it doesn't mean your dog won't. You know, you know, everybody has their little idiosyncrasies, and somehow she was drawn she to that plant. She ate everything, so. Yeah. And so, and then, if she's older, your sensory taste buds and your hearing goes, you know how that is with older dogs, so probably didn't affect her that much, at least initially. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know if it's, is it the flower, the leaf, or the root that's everything. poisonous, or it's all poisonous? Yeah, everything. Okay. That's a good question, because a lot of times in plants, there's a certain <coughs> component that's more toxic than others. Sometimes the poison <coughs> is in the flowers, or more in the stems, or more in the leaf, or more in the root. But who knows about this one? Yet. There's so many poisons out there. Good question, though. 